background. But there you go, recording. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to create this database. Now, there's a couple ways that we could do this. We need to have an SQL server. There is an SQL server here at the college, which is on the SIT um, website, or we could just use an online one. I think that I like to use just an online one and you can access the online server. Here it is, it's uh, sqlliteonline.com. If you navigate to SQL Lite, um, SQL Online IDE is says it here, but it's sqlliteonline.com. If you navigate to that site, you will be able to uh, use, um, use SQL. Now, the, the problem with this site, and it's, it's a problem, but it's a good thing, and uh, it's part of the reason why I do it with the students, is um, actually, you've only got like half an hour to use what it, what, whatever you're doing on this uh, server. Um, after that, all your commands are lost. And so that forces you, it disciplines you to keep your commands somewhere else or somehow else. Well, what you can do is you can write SQL commands, same as you do any other programming language. And so you can use an editor and you could do Microsoft Word if you wanted. But what I would encourage you to do is to use something like Notepad, and you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, you could write your commands in in um, Notepad and then transfer them to S to SQL, or the other way around, uh, or or write them here in your SQL Lite, and once it's working, then transfer it to to Notepad. Then save this Notepad document, and then every time you'll be able to start with your database. And you'll be able to make it new, etc. Because what will happen is it will be dropped by the um, server every time you you finish. So that's, I mean, this SQL Lite is only good for teaching, really. I think um, it's uh, <laughs> oh, maybe I don't know. They got a business uh, thing down there, so I bet I should watch what I say because, to be honest, I haven't checked that, so I don't know. So uh, the interface, the way I have used it because it just drops you out after half an hour, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't rely on it to, 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 um, to upload my, my business. Um, I would keep it uh, on another server that I, and that, this is the thing, MySQL uh, is free. Um, you, you can download it and start up a server on your computer and, and run at MySQL. Now, with, SQL Lite, once you've navigated to that, you actually have to choose a relational database method or system that you want to use. And so I recommend you choose MS SQL because that way the commands that you use will be compatible with the with uh, what we're teaching, which is SQL, right? There are other relational database commands which are kind of slightly different. So let's stick with MS SQL. So, do, so you'll need to choose that as your SQL to, to run, right? So once you've done that, you can uh, start writing your SQL commands. So uh, you don't have to guess what these commands are. We've actually sort of given you them, but let's just try it out and see how that's going to work. So I'm, I've got, yeah, here. Um, let's go to the top here and, and write this command. Um, now, if it was in text, we could copy and paste, but it's not. So we're going to have to type that in there, right? So I'm going to make that so that I can see it while I'm typing. So yeah, create table, table. Uh, now here you put the name of the table. I, it says rep, but it could be sales rep. Um, when you do it, it has to be a single word in the old style. And so this may be old style. Um, so now each of these, so when I say rep number, that is a field name. So we've created a we're creating a table. We're calling it sales rep. Um, we're going to rep num. When we open the round bracket, what's going to follow there is going to be the name of one of the fields. The fields would be like column headings, if you because uh, um, you can imagine this creates tables. That's the way the database works. It's relational database tables. Um, now, what this means here, the primary key. Uh, every every uh, table 
must have an index key with which, which is a unique identifier for every record in the table. So I, this is just database theory. So I suppose it goes along with what we're trying to do here, right? You must have a unique, unique means there's only one of them for each record. And so that is your primary key. Now, typically a primary key is gonna be like a special, special number or something. So for example, all of us have, have numbers that are associated with us, which would be perfect primary keys. For example, your QID. And you notice that whenever you have an interaction with the government uh, databases, that, that you can use your QID. Your QID is going to be a primary key in a database table about you. And so here's another one. We have a rep number, which is gonna be a primary key um, for reps. Okay, so notice the, um, the, um, Case is not important. I'm I'm using upper or lower case. Um, the, the notes are using uppercase. I think it matters. Uh, back in the day, yeah, it did. All right. So what have I done there? Um, what we're saying here is our first field in this table is repnum, and it is two characters because we have to say characters because there's different kinds of field types. So you can have a type which just holds characters, you know, the letters of the alphabet and, and numbers. Um, you can have one which uh, holds dates, um, numbers, and different types of numbers, you know, so you can have numbers which are your floating numbers or just your integer numbers. And so you, you need to specify what is the type of the field that, uh, you're declaring. So I'm declaring these fields here. Uh, first name, I got a straight one. And now about the spelling of these, right? So is it important that I spell them exactly as they are here? What's important is that your spelling is consistent, meaning that you spell it the same way every time, right? Uh, so, I mean, you know, I could, if I want to call this um, street without with only one e, that's fine as long as every time I do a query or every time I I try and do anything with that field that I spell it the same way. So from that point of view, it's probably right to just spell it correctly the first time because your default would be to probably spell things correct, right? So so far we've got all of these fields which are character fields, and you might look at that and maybe this would be interesting to you as it is to me that um, we've got values that, um, why would they be characters, right? Like you got a street number. Oh, you know, those all be characters, yeah, names. But a zip uh, is a number in the United States. Um, and, and we, but we record it as a character. So there's certain numbers that we do record as characters um, because um, they're, we don't, it's sort of rule of thumb when you're uh, creating a database, if you, if uh, the field is gonna be used for mathematics or counting, then it should be a number. If it's gonna be used um, for some other way, like to identify things, then it should be not a number. It should be a, um, a character. So for example, phone numbers, zips, things like that, they are a number, but you don't, you don't add, add phone numbers together or anything like that. There's no mathematics you do with them. So uh, you don't you don't need to store them as a number. You store them as a as a character. Now we get here to commission. Commission is a number. We do do mathematics with commission. This is how we pay our sales reps is by commission. And so we're recording that. Not just are we recording that as a number, but we're recording it as a special number, a decimal number, because people can be paid. Uh, I suppose this would be in dollars. Uh, people can be paid a part of a dollar. You can have cents. Um, so, or, or with cutter reels, it could be dirhams. Um, so we, we record that we we record that as um, as uh, reels, but um, with decimal place. And um, all right, so another decimal number. And so, what are these numbers behind there? Million, right? So, what this means uh, with the commission decimal seven two, that means that. The number can have seven digits in it, and I'm not sure if that includes the decimal place, but I think maybe not. And but uh, the the second number after the comma 
means how many um, val how many decimals after the or sorry how many numbers after the decimal point. So that would be to to two hundredths, right? And so at the end of the command, do you notice all of the commas that I did as we went through there? We did all these commas, and then at the end of the command, we do a semicolon. And when we're happy with that, we just go ahead and run it. And it may not work. Three hours time experience at database. Oh, no. so did that. Three hours time out exceeded. <laughs> really? Um, I have to click to connect to it. So this is why you need to, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem is I need to click to agree to that. What, I'm gonna, what I need to do is just make sure I don't lose my command, right? So I'm gonna copy that command. And so if this happens to you and it will happen to you, you need to connect again, right? Um, and let's try again. Uh, incorrect system uh, syntax near commission. So what have I done near commission? Uh, Okay, so you, it helps you, this is quite good. It helps you to see any little mistakes you made. I made a little mistake there where I left the comma out. So don't do that. And, and okay, so there's another one near the end. So it says it's near, I think that says a semicolon, right? Internet correct sequence. So let's have a look. So commission, we got past there, so we know it's in here, right? All uh, right, decimal. Mm. What have we got? I don't know if that, I, it could be that, that this one doesn't take decimal. I think it's numeric. Uh, rather than decimal, maybe I could be wrong. I didn't remember that uh, decimal being there, but you know, I could be wrong. No, it's still not that. So what have I got? Um, don't tell me that this has got a decimal in it instead of a comma. It's, it's pretty clear in the thing that that's a comma. Let's, let's run again. No, out of range. So that is a comma. All right, so I just, oh, can you see it? Ah, I see it now. I didn't. What do we got? Okay, so commission, numeric or number or whatever. Before we said decimal, right? And it it um, uppercase that. Ah, uh, but that's wrong. We know that's wrong. Um, what have I done wrong? Great table sales rep. Oh yes, we need one more semicolon. Oh, we need one more one more round bracket um, because we open the round bracket here and we close it there. My, my apologies, students. So now that went away without any errors. So it means it's worked. And we can see that it's worked by clicking on this one. And that one shows us that that table has been created. So, I mean, you know, sorry about my sort of um, um, not being able to see the bracket was missing, <laughs> um, but, um, that has created a table for us. So the next thing to do is to actually go and put something in the table. So this is what we need to do here. You don't have the answer in your, in your thing, but I have it here for you, but we'll try and explain as we go. Write commands to add the following to the rep table. Rep number 25, last name, Lim, first name, Lewis, so Lewis Lim, street, 535 Vincent City Grove State F Florida uh, zip code and commission on those two numbers. 
And so actually, rather than me typing it out in my lame way, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I've got this code and I know it works now. So I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to my, my editor and here's my editor and I'm gonna paste it in there. There's my, my uh, command. Uh, that's a command that I know works. And so then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna save it. Um, should have a save as there. Uh, find a place to save it. Uh, okay, so. Let's see. Uh, you know, for now, I'll just um, put it in the desktop. I'll put a new folder there. And because later I'll move it to somewhere else. But I'll put a new folder and I'll call that my SQL for. Um, CP 1000 folder. Then that's where I'm going to put to save this. And I'm going to call this my. Now, when we save it, and to save it as a um, SQL file. Because uh, then we could run it on the server if we had a server. Um, but uh, we do have a, this is the thing with uh, Notepad is you do have a chance to save things as an SQL file, I think. Um, structured query language, doesn't call it SQL, it calls it structured query language, that'll do. And save that. And so one of the reasons why I saved it as a structured uh, query language file is that, that uh, then Notepad is able to highlight um, certain parts of the code that actually gives you some help. And so I can actually, the other thing is you see up here, I use these, which may be familiar to you. That's what we used, not in HTML, but in CSS, if we wanted to put a comment in, do these kind of comments. And so I, I have a comment here, and this is sort of for uh, lab one, question one. And so now I have that, I've done it, and I'll be able to use it again anytime I want. And so that's a good thing, right? So now we're gonna do uh, question two. So I'll just say question two. And then close the close and you open it. And so there we go, we're, we're, uh, we're ripping away with this. I think I'm going to be lazy here because I'm not a really good typist. I have the code. <laughs> you guys are going to have to type it, sorry, but you can see from the video. I take this one away because we don't need to create that anymore. I've got it right. Um, now, this is not looking really good. So let's see if I can. So insert into rep. Uh, so notice that it uh, could be all in one line or it doesn't have to be, right? I'm not gonna put it all in one line because it looks so bad. But you know, three lines is enough. Um, now, why doesn't it matter how many lines we put it on? Because the command, the, the, um, yeah, the command ends when you put a semicolon, but it doesn't end until you put a semicolon. So you got different things you can do. So what are we doing here? Insert into. REP. Now, I didn't save a table called REP. My table was sales rep. Now, there is uh, it's that one there. So that's the other thing about this. Um, the server smart enough to actually test to see if that that um, table exists. So uh, when I went to, to insert into, and I started typing sales. It would it showed me the tables that are available to insert into, and there's only one which is that one. Okay, so insert into the name of the table. And then each of these are the fields that you're going to insert because you don't, don't have to insert into every field. You could just insert into one field if you wanted to, but we're gonna insert it to every field. Now, very important here, we put all of the fields that we're gonna insert data into, and they must be spelled the same as I spelled them before. I hope so you can check as you go, right? There's rep num, last name, first name, Etc. Okay, so make sure that they're okay. 
Um, then in the next part of the command, we say values and the values, notice the values, even if it's a number or it's not a number, well, number is treated differently, right? Everything that's not a number, the characters, they all have quotes. The numbers are without quotes. So we've got these here, the numbers here, the last two, they're decimal, they're without quotes. Everything else has got quotes on it. And we could run that. And of course, it doesn't work, right? So what's the problem here? Um, ran out of room. Okay, let's see. Um, string or binary would be truncated in table. Column city truncated value GR. All right. Yes. Okay. So what happened here is the person, um, when we put the name in there, uh, that it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be all one. Vincent, for, we put it, there's a comma in there that shouldn't be in there or something. A grove. Where's Grove? Well, let's see. Um, it's saying that Grove, what it's saying is that the data that we're putting doesn't fit the field that it's going into. So let's have, let's just check. Um, so it's thinking that Grove should go into that field. So Grove is actually supposed to be over here. So I, I don't know why that, that command was um, like that, but so it should be like that four, five, three, five, because I, I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be. No, nope. same. Uh, there, there are more columns in the insert statement than values. So no, the Grove is supposed to be there. Okay, let's look at, let's look at the values and see. Uh, so it's um, rep number, okay. Uh, last name, Lim, first name, Lewis, street. And so this was supposed to be there. This is how it was before. City, okay. Yeah, what, make sure that they're all there. Yeah, they look all right. So Vincent. Um, city, did I, you know what, what it probably is, is I probably got the, um, it's just, I think that I might have done the city with not enough characters. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I'd done. All right, so that's a bit of a problem. Let's go back and look at our original command. That's that's a good reason for sort of keeping these things here, right? Um, in our in our document, right? So I did the city and I didn't give it enough characters. I only gave it two. So let's go and change that to like, I don't know, 10 or something. Um, you, you, you'll see what it is. Now that's why I saved it there. So I don't have to type that all again, right? Now I know that this one is, is working, right? This one is working. Um, well, let's see, let's copy it. Put it into our editor. Uh, for for question two, all right there it is, and it's working now. And um, right, so I'm going to start over again with this. Uh, I can test this now. I can test this now because I've saved that. Right? Have I saved that? Just double checking because I don't like typing stuff over again. But yeah, there is. Lab one is at the top and then lab two, I sorry, question two is there and we checked it and it works. So I'll take it away from here and I'll just do this um, uh, select star from, and it's uh, the only one that's there is sales rep, right? So select star from sales rep, my colon and run it. And there we go, limb. So the city, we're gonna fix that. Okay, but uh, we put our first our first um, record in, and it's not, and um, it's okay. But what we can do is we can drop that table. So drop table um, sales rep.
And now we, so it ran and that worked, the table's gone. So now we say, oh, now I have to go and create that table again. Yeah, but don't worry. And somebody's trying to talk. Yes, you could use Visual Studio Code. Um, you could use Microsoft Word if you wanted. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if there's much help that Visual Studio Code will give you that um, that Notepad plus plus won't, but it might maybe. So I'm gonna drop that table, and I'm gonna put my other code in. Now I'm gonna try. I'm not sure this will work because I've had this not work in the past where I've tried to run two commands at once. Um, if in a, on some servers it works, let's see if it works on this server. So how we would know if it can run two commands at two commands? What I mean is serially, one at a time, uh, one at a time, but in the same command thing. Let's see if it'll work. Let's copy that. So we got both commands. I don't know if this will work, but it might. So what this if this works, what it'll do is it'll create the table, then it'll insert the data. It, well, there we go. It's created the table, and so has it inserted the data? Well, now we we're, so it looks like we can run scripts in this. Script is where you write a whole lot of whole lot of commands one after another. So we could do a test on this now. I would do that is we'd say select star from sales rep. You saw me do this a minute ago, right? So now I'm writing a script because I've got more than one command, command after command. Um, all together, that's a script. Now, what I now, if I try to run this script now, if I try to run this script now, it'll error. And the reason it'll error is because I'll be trying to create a table which already exists. So I could drop the table. So what? But what I should do is I should say, drop table name of it. Say if exists, uh, and then sales. So what the, it's able to actually test to see if that exists. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't exist, it won't drop it. So we'll be able to create it. But if it does exist, it'll drop it. So we'll be able to create it. All right, so let's save that. Now let's um, put that, that um, script in there and run it and see if it works. Whoa. They're already an object named sales, right? So it looks like the, it looks like the um, drop did not work on me, right? Uh, oh, where is it? I, I did I put that? The drop is not in there. Why? What happened with my copy? And uh, now I'm. I didn't copy this. I guess. Let's see. Control C. Now I'm gonna the 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 lesson's gonna end in a minute, so I might get cut off. What do we got for time? We got two minutes and twenty three seconds. Let me just try this again and check and see if that's in fact what we're doing. Drop table if exists. Okay, let's try. So it has dropped it, and then it created it again. And it's done this, but this is not working properly, is it? Because the street name I, has been truncated it's short because I started out with a very small um, field. And uh, so can you see why I'm using the editor? All right, so did I not save that here? Uh, yeah, I, I did here, but here I had to, all right, so let's save that. Again, let's copy this, it'll drop it. So it's working with um, it's working with scripts. That's nice. All right. So let's just run. Yeah, there we go. So now we got the city. We're ripping away. So why I like this way is once you've got your code down, it's saved for you in this nice little. Um, uh, you've got it in this in this uh, file, which you can take with you wherever you go. And you can see you can run a script with this. So you can uh, you can use this however you want. So we're going to run out of time, but I'll do a couple more of these. If we, Well, we got one minute. We, we've run out of time. So I'm sorry, we've run out of time, but that'll kind of get you started. 
And um, so the idea is now to sort of just work through, you're gonna have to create all those tables and then check what's happening with each of them. And I hope that works out okay for you. And so sort of good luck. <laughs> we got lots of time to sort of go through this. We'll have, um, it, actually, if you want, do, do you want to continue on? Because I could start the, start again, we're gonna end in a minute. All right, is, or is that enough for you? Cheers. Yes, you can. So it's going to end. It says less than one minute, but it hasn't been. But what I would do for the next one is, right, drop table.